Electrive Studio, powered by EVBox. Hello and welcome to electdrive.com. Our studio today is at the EV Box event Revolution in Amsterdam. With me is Mathieu Weinen. He works for the municipality of Amsterdam and is charged with increasing the actually existing and quite large network of charging infrastructure. So Mathieu, thank you very much for being here. Um, where are we at at the moment in Amsterdam? Um, yeah, thanks for having me. We're actually uh, proud to call the city home to one of the densest uh, charging net AC charging networks in the world. And we're very happy to be at such a point where basically anyone with any card and any car can use our, our network. Uh, at the same time, we, we expect the EV uptake to really take off now. So yeah, we're facing challenges to how to cope with that in the future. You just said uh, anybody can charge uh, any car at any time. That sounds like quite a dream, uh, uh, less the reality. How did you achieve that? What do you do differently? I think um, we started uh, with a very basic rule that uh, anyone should be able to charge anywhere. So interoperability is a, has been a big thing from the very start. Uh, about 10 years ago, the city determined that if we want EV to become reality, uh, we should provide a basic network. So there was a little research into which locations and which areas of the city would be most fruitful for EV to take off. That's where uh, about 100 AC charges were put in place and it worked. And uh, later on we developed um, a very tight process with the, um, the grid operator on one hand and the constructor on the other hand uh, in order to build this process where uh, anyone who would buy an EV could call the city we would provide, we would make sure that a, that a charging facility or a station would be put uh, within walking distance from their homes and from their working places, uh, which resulted in a very, very dense um, network nowadays, which covers basically the whole city. And um, we also had a, a tight arrangement on sharing data and uh, getting the data from the operators and from the, 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 the users uh, enabled us to put to put more stations in places where they were needed most. Yeah, um, I think you call this the demand-driven approach. Um, however, it seems to be there is like another point to this. It sounds like quite exclusive, right? Like, oh, I have this car and I want a charge pot next to my house. What about like the wider uh, thinking, like street furniture, cluttering the town, or actually having less cars? What's the strategy on this or what's the payoff maybe? Actually, of course, as many other European cities, we're looking at limiting the, uh, the car traffic or the traffic in general within the public space. Uh, but it's an illusion to think that a city like Amsterdam, albeit it's very compact and many people use public transport and bikes, we will still need individual transportation too. So we're aiming at um, making the remaining uh, transport as clean as possible. And you have quite a focus on AC charging, like the smaller charging points, a wildlife park, basically. How about uh, larger car parks, like a pit stop, with DC charging? Um, at larger car parks, yeah, we, we, we started off with bundling AC charging in certain locations. We call them charging squares or charging plazas. But we've also employed uh, 17 DC charges nowadays around the historic center and a bit further out on main arteries. Uh, they basically, um, uh, they're mostly aimed at taxi drivers and other uh, frequent Amsterdam road users, but they can be used by anyone as well. We really cling on to the interoperability there too. And uh, how do you actually uh, secure this interoperability? I mean, there are, there are many providers. Uh, uh, what do you ask them to do? Actually, as a city, we're lucky to have a strong position when it comes to determining the rules of the contract or the agreement. And uh, from the very from the very start, we've been we've been quite tough on this. Uh, interoperability as well as data sharing had to be guaranteed. Otherwise, we wouldn't we wouldn't sail the ship. And what do you do with the data? How can I imagine this? Uh, does this uh, uh, develop your pricing policy, or do you see there is more demand? Maybe you can give us an example on this. So the the air quality program, which is which is in charge of the charging network, has always had strong ties with uh, knowledge institutions in Amsterdam. Uh, so we work closely together with them to see um, how are the AC charges being used, where is the biggest stress on the network, where do we expect to uh, to 
to have, need to put more AC charges in place. And it also helps uh, the other way to validate the expansion of the network because if you can prove to people who never want a charging station in the backyards um, that they're actually being used, that helps the policy makers a lot too. And how about uh, pricing? Does the city provide free charging and also they have uh, changed this uh, now? What's, what's Amsterdam's uh, stance on this? Uh, we don't promote free charging, but um, we do cap the, the rate for charging, AC charging as well as DC charging, uh, to enable as many people as possible to, to charge there. Yeah, it's still cheaper to charge at home, but many Amsterdam residents rely on a public space. Uh, almost 90% can't park on their own premises, so we try to do them a service and basically uh, it's still cheaper to, to charge in a public space than it usually is on other stations. And you do also something else, because another problem is, okay, now there are charging stations, but some people use it to park their car, uh, even while they are not charging. Um, so what is Amsterdam doing to kind of re-educate or educate the users? <laughs> yeah, so we, we, we're familiar with this icing problem. Uh, it is an issue, it happens here too. It's not very big, though. There's only a minor percentage of uh, EV drivers which well, stay at the parking, uh, at, at the charging station parked for a very long time. Um, we're looking at possibilities to enhance social charging, where users in, a, for example, a, a designated area can update each other, like through WhatsApp or through an app, um, to, um, well, to point out that they need to share the facilities. Uh, we're looking at uh, variating or playing with the, the charge rate too. So if you stay connected for a certain time, you'll be charged more to push people from, uh, from icing. Um, and in the worst case, people can actually call the city. There's a general number where they can report um, icing. Yeah, well, yeah, icing is, is more like EVing, I guess. Uh, it's, a, it's really a new problem. Um, and staying with this uh, collaboration or exchanging data, if you would uh, talk to another municipality, another city, what would be your three uh, uh, top advice uh, to give them? Uh, I would definitely advise them to use the data to validate what you're doing and to, to push the rollout of your AC and DC charging network. Um, I think in Amsterdam what's been very successful is like a, a little tripod of measures um, including uh, stimulation, supporting and regulation because only putting AC charges out doesn't do the trick. You need to, well, softly force people to use them too. So if you regulate, for example, by implementing uh, emission zones that pushes people to 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 well to driving an EV instead of a petrol car, uh, and a third would be well hang on to the demand drivenness because if you're gonna if you're gonna sprawl AC charges out in the street, people will see them. Maybe they won't be used as opti as optimized as you would wish, uh, and then your um, um, well your leverage for a further rollout will diminish. All right, thank you very much uh, for talking to us. Um, this was Mathieu Weinen from the city of Amsterdam. Amsterdam wants to become a zero emission city. Uh, we are very much looking forward to this. Uh, we were here for EVbox, electrive.com studio. Thank you very much. Electrive studio, powered by EVbox.